Hello, my name is Alex Cherodnichenko, and today I am going to talk about the progress on Mark Slides application. So Mark Slides is a Markdown-based attempt on tackling the problem of slide making in a content-centric way. It is in prototype phase at the moment. So today I am going to talk specifically about the second prototype, which is an implementation of Flogo Interpreter to be embedded into Mark Slides for in-place text-based graphics. I'm currently looking at the index page of the project, which is httpmarkslides.org, feel free to visit, that's available. It has some details on the project itself. Now let's get started. So I'm opening up the logo interpreter on the prototype section in the right, and the interpreter UI loads up. First to notice, the screen is split into two uh, sections. So program is put on the left-hand side, and result panels are on the right-hand side. Uh, let's get started by selecting one of the predefined uh, programs, say the one with circles, because that's not a straightforward thing to do, draw a circle in logo. As you might have noticed, several things happened once I selected this program. First of all, the text has been loaded into the program text box. Secondly, the information box has updated to reflect that program has been passed successfully. And uh, Finally, there is an abstract syntax tree on the right. We can play around with it. We can see what is the representation of this very program in our abstract syntax tree. Uh, but the program hasn't run yet. In order to run it, we need to click the run button. That's what I'm going to do now. And we got the execution happening and the result shown in the uh, canvas on the right. Great, so that's a very good start. Now. This is the full-fledged interpreter, which means that we can change the program and it would reflect in the, uh, in the result. For example, here what I'm doing, I'm repeating 10 times, please draw a circle in a position of 20 plus random something and 20 plus random something, and then the radius of the circle is 30 plus random 100, which means like from 30 to 130. Let's change this to the smaller circle just to see that we can actually control that. Say we want 30 plus a maximum of 30, but that to be the random. Yep, that's the result. As you can see, the changes have been applied and we have got a new picture. To notice, uh, the uh, pictures would be different each time because we are randomizing the position of the circles. So this is the one of the preset programs. You can surely enter your own and see how it works. Uh, speaking of error handling and the way it reflects it in the user interface, for example, if we are, I don't know, for example, adding extra parameter to the uh, procedure, which shouldn't have a, so the procedure is called circle has three parameters, and at the moment we are passing four of those, and let's see what happens. When I click pass, it works properly, because it's formally correct program. At the same time, when I try to run it, the interpreter would say that there is a run and error because the number of parameters doesn't match. We're expecting three, but we're actually getting four, which is wrong. Same happens if, for example, I mess up one, some of the keyboards by, uh, I don't know, adding extra text into the number, for example, which isn't a valid syntax. So that's where the parser kicks in and we get an error in the parsing stage. We get parsing error, which has syntax error expecting something, but we got S in here, which is uh, probably this is, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll, I'll be keeping up with these videos and I hope to see this language logo graphics embedded very soon to the Mark Slides project.